Russian troops retreated from the Kiev region months ago. But for some, returning back home is still a distant dream. On Tuesday morning, this 65-year-old is standing in Borodanka town centre, watching one of the multi-storied buildings being demolished. The building she used to live in has not yet been torn down. But like many others, damaged in fierce battle since March. It is not suitable to spend the winter in. The town with a pre-war population of nearly 13,000 was the target of shelling and fightings in the early stages of the Russian invasion. It turned apartment buildings into charred, bombed-out hulks. Ukrainian authorities claim that they have discovered evidence of children being tortured in territories formerly occupied by the Russian army. For the first time, we recorded the torture of children. Yes, it's true. There are no limits to the cynicism of the Russian Federation. I thought it was impossible to break through the rock bottom after Bucha, Irpin, after I personally saw two torture chambers in Balaklia, which were located opposite each other. I even talked with our citizens who were there. One boy was there for 90 days. He tells us how he was tortured. He was cut with a knife, metal was heated, and with this metal, parts of his body were burned. He was taken out for a shooting down several times, and they shot over his head. We discovered 10 torture chambers in Kherson, and four of them are in the city itself. We see rock bottom in Kherson. In one of the torture chambers, we found a separate cell where children were kept. And according to the testimonies of people who were there, it was said that they knew that our Ukrainian children were there. Even the occupiers themselves called it a children's cell. Not only we have recorded torture, but we have also recorded that the children were not given water. Water was provided every other day. They were practically not given food. Psychological pressure was used and they would say that their parents abandoned them and would not return for them. One of the boys, he is 14 years old, was taken away only for taking pictures of broken Russian equipment. A nurse wounded by a Russian sniper was spirited out, wrapped in sheets. Another, sickened by the thought of working for the people who destroyed his home, snuck out a side door and walked out through Mariupol's shattered streets. Doctors shed their scrubs for street clothes. And one by one, the staff of the largest hospital in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine slipped away as Russian forces seized control of the city's center. Months later, around 30 staff members from Mariupol's Hospital No. 2 have reassembled in Kiev. Along with 30 specialists from a cardiac hospital in a Donetsk city that remains under Ukraine control, they're now opening up a part-down version of a public hospital to help displaced Ukrainians in need of care.